Well, you may have noticed something's missing around here. There's no more Summit Tractor anywhere. And everything has its season, right? And so Summit was not meant to be a permanent thing that was gonna last forever. It was a limited time partnership to help get a new brand kickstarted and kind of off the ground and just be one component in their whole overall game plan, right? And so I was really, well, I guess originally flattered and, and just proud to be considered as being part of that effort. And so that was really the story. And I keep getting comments asking why I'm no longer working with Summit and it was never meant to be a permanent thing. And so it was meant to be kind of an advertising launch. And again, I still stand by all the things that I said. I, I worked with them for all the reasons I originally wanted to work with them. And I still think that they're executing on that game plan and building out their platform in the same way that I would. I think it's just direct to, direct to consumer, basically, right? You have these big mass retailers that are a lot easier to access. They have a service network that's independent of that, that you can take your machine into. They can come out to you. It's a way, way more modernized method and approach of selling equipment and similar to how I do it, selling the used tractors that I sell, that I used to sell. Now I've gotten back into doing that as well. And so really this comes down to just an opportunity that I took advantage of. And, and I've said it before too, if we get to the point down the road and I'm still selling used equipment, if there's some tractors that are out there in the used market, and I can snag them for a price point that makes sense and resell them, I certainly will do so. I think they represent a great value. You know, it's, it's a low risk machine because it's, it's built off of an existing platform that was there and then tailor made for the Summit brand itself. And so it, it's a proven concept, a proven manufacturer. They've been around for a long time. They're growing in the right direction. And even as I brought on Coyote, you know, as, as into the, the fold, as I, I sell used tractors again, it used to just be John Deere and Kubota, and maybe there'd be a random trade-in that I would take that would be a Coyote or an LS, New Holland, Massey, that kind of thing. But now I'm, I'm specifically going out and targeting Coyote on top of Deere and Kubota. And, and a large reason for that is that um, I think of, well, you got Deere and Kubota right up top, and then you have a couple other levels underneath there. And I think Coyote is right at that level that's underneath Kubota and Deer um, for a few reasons. You know, they have they are well established. They've been around for a long time. I think in the U.S. alone, it's been around 40 years, give or take. Uh, they're known to have good quality, great features. I, I love the the side-by-side, -side, the twin touch pedals over the treadle pedal that Kubota has. Um, great capabilities, proven reliability, not as big of a dealer network for, for parts and service, but still a substantial dealer network. And what we've gone through in the last few years is pricing out of the market. You know, the, the deer and the Kubotas are, are just getting too expensive for a lot of consumers. And so you need to have an alternative that it can be a quality, more pocket friendly or budget friendly alternative. And that's where Coyote fits in. And that's really where Summit fit in. Now, Summit doesn't have a full lineup of tractors, right? They've got one model right now. They're coming out with some variations. They're going to come out with a cab version of that. They're going to come out with a bigger series of tractors as well and have an open station in the cab, that kind of thing too. So they'll get there at, at some point. But right now, Coyote is kind of like where Summit could be in years to come. And I'm, I'm loving the Coyotes personally. So I, I still love Deer and Kubota. Love my Kubota M4. Got a gem of a, a, a Grandel uh, 4060 that we just got in recently too. You know, I'm, and actually I'm sitting on a deer model right now that I think has missed the mark on a couple of things that I've talked about before. I mean, you, you make a, you redesign a two series tractor a few years ago to compete with your main competition is the Kubota LX series. You keep it with a two range transmission instead of the three range, which you're starting to see in more and more tractors this size. You don't offer this size of a tractor, a 38 horsepower tractor with a factory cab that has air conditioning and heat. I don't get it. I mean, those are a couple of major missed opportunities to to level the playing field i mean if not go above your competition and, and i it, they missed the mark there so the big guys still make errors even though they're charging a premium folks we are proud to be sponsored by rimguard solutions a liquid ballast weight it goes right inside your tires completely hidden 
We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of rim guard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at rimguardsolutions.com. So as a business, everything I do is thinking about the business opportunity. What are the trade-offs? the pros and the cons, right? And at the time it was working out perfectly because I, that's when the pandemic was kind of kicking into gear right around then. And the used market was upside down. Like the used market wasn't in every industry where used tractors were going for the price of new tractors because you couldn't get new tractors. And so I, it didn't make sense for me to even sell used equipment anymore. And it's just like, it's, it's crazy how timing works out where this all comes in together and, and works and it kind of intertwines. And so the summit opportunity was, was perfect for me to kind of transition to that and have a tractor that I could highlight and show and uh, display and, and something fun and different and, and as well that my channel hadn't seen. And so going through that, again, the timing of, of how they kind of kicked off, got started and just a few little regional areas and then have expanded into multiple regions now and selling nationwide and all these different opportunities. But then I started to get the itch again, right? And the pandemic was winding down and it's like, once again, all the stars just align where, you know, we could have gone on longer with Summit, but I also want to keep my channel fresh. I wanted to buy and sell used tractors again. That market was stabilizing. And so things happen for a reason, right? And so that's, that's what you see now. You see me back in the used tractor market, kind of doing what I did starting out and in that way, getting back to my roots a bit. So I think some folks on, on social media in particular, get really hung up on thinking that you can't change, that things need to stay the same. And there's, um, there's no room for, for changing direction and in, in anything that you do. And I think with more information, the smarter you get. And you should be completely open to changing direction, even if that means going back to what you did before. Um, it could be mean trying something new, it could be trying an experiment and seeing how it goes, but that's the problem with a lot of folks and a lot of businesses and why they don't get anywhere and they just sit there and spin their wheels and tread water is, number one, they're afraid of change because they don't know what the unknown means. Me, I love the unknown, I like figuring that out and. I'm willing to take risks, I enjoy taking risk, and the more risk you take, those high risk things become less risky. And so you need to put yourself in those situations and take smaller risks here and here, and then slowly bite off bigger and bigger chunks and see where that puts you. And so I, it doesn't matter if you're in a business or if this is just your personal life and you're, you wanna get a tractor, you wanna get a piece of land, you, you wanna start your own business, and you, you do a side hustle, whatever it is, but you gotta, get off your butt and do something about it. And so I hope to inspire some folks from time to time by doing just that. And you don't have to, I don't owe anybody an explanation for anything. And that's the other downside of the day and age that we live in is that everybody thinks that you owe them something. It's information overload, right? I mean, all you gotta do is be able to look at yourself in the mirror day in, day out and be happy with the decisions that you're making. And so there you go, folks. That's, that's just the reasoning behind the whole not doing summit anymore. There's no big brouhaha or anything like that. It's just my mind is always churning and working. I'm always thinking about the future and different steps, but nothing is permanent. It's always going to change. It's always going to move and always going to evolve. And again, I'd encourage you to think about your life, your business the same exact way. Now on that note, if you're looking for a tractor or tractor attachments, I would love to earn your business Check out what we have to offer at goodworkstractors.com. We ship nationwide. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.